Now I'm hoping I can show you guys where the cruise control box goes, but it's kind of in a weird spot. There's just two 10 millimeter bolts that hold it in place. Actually, there's three total, but uh, I'll show you the other side here in just one second. I was not wanting to thread in, of course. I'll take you off the tripod and show you what I'm talking about. So uh, there's just a small, I believe that's a seven millimeter there, and then the two tens up top. And it does have like a channel that it sets in up above. We're gonna go ahead and snug this down. For now, I'm just going to push this up against the steering or beside the steering column and then kind of up and over the car. But there's a section here uh, with a plug on it, and that plugs in right, right here. So basically, where your um, brake lines connect to this plastic junction box. So that is where um, the cruise control line runs up to. And I do need to clean that off. I noticed that I missed some dirt there. Once that line's in place, the box is in place, let's lower this thing down and uh, take a look at that valley cover that we were talking about. What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TWA Motorsports, and today, you guessed it, we are back on the Trans Am. Now, some frustrating stuff. So the other day, I decided I'm gonna work on the car. Um, the next step really is to put the new LS6 uh, valley cover on, and guess what? My block is the older style block, so this has to be cut off. Now, how stupid am I to not have cut this off while the engine was out of the car? I know, I'm pretty dumb, but, we're gonna have to cut this off in the car, which really sucks because obviously I've done all this painting. So we're going to have to cover this up. Now, one of the reasons we're doing the LS6 conversion is for, uh, well, there's actually a couple reasons. So one, we're gonna get rid of a lot of the uh, vacuum lines and original PCV that ran on the back side of the intake. As you can see, I've already put the plug in on that side, but it eliminates all that stuff. So. Uh, it dresses up the engine, makes it look a little nicer, and it is it actually keeps the engine from burning as much oil. So it keeps the oil clean longer, and it's easier to hook up a catch can. There's a, there's a ton of reasons, guys, but um, on the newer style blocks, this isn't here. And I'll show you the new piece, and I'll list the, all the part numbers down below because this is um, multiple parts. But this is the new PCV, which is in the center. The problem is, is when you go to set this on, it hits that piece on the block. So today, we are going to cut that off. Now, uh, unfortunately, because the engine's already in the car, this would have been super simple, like I said, if the engine were out of the car. But because it's in the car, it's going to make it a little more tricky, but not too bad. We're going to get some plastic and cover all this stuff up. And then I had my wife get some cheap towels that we're going to use as well. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stuff some towels in the inside of the intake there and then we'll put the plastic on and then some like, um, I'm just using sh like house towels, household towels, but you'll see that here in a second. But let's get started. I'm gonna grab all my supplies and then like I said, we'll talk about the LS6. I'll list all that LS6 Valley Cover info down in the description. But like I said, let's go grab the plastic and some towels and start covering this up. Once we 
we've got some of this covered up and I'm still gonna put some towels over this but as you can see I'm working kind of like a doctor I've got everything blocked off and I'm gonna tape a couple pieces down just to try to keep as much aluminum out of the engine as possible now I just have some towels that like I said my wife picked up some cheap ones and we're going to kind of wrap around all this area not going to be perfect hopefully I'm catching on fire am I? who knows Now once we got everything kind of blocked off, uh, I'm going to go grab a marker and I'll mark and show you guys what exactly we're going to be cutting. Now um, there's quite a bit. Uh, we're just cutting this chunk off and we're cutting about three quarters of an inch down. And like I said, I'll mark it and then I'll show you guys what, what it's going to look like before we start. So now I was able to, I cleaned this up really well with some uh, adhesive remover and well actually some um, brake clean and the tape is now sticking a lot better so that's good now I don't have any gaps but you can see where I've marked and uh, hopefully you can see where I've marked but we're wanting to take this upper chunk off and kind of make kind of a cut like that now what I'm going to be using is just a Dremel with a cutoff wheel and uh, make sure guys that you put some goggles on for protection and I would even use a respirator so you're not or even, you don't have to use a respirator but at least a mask that way you're not breathing in any of these fumes while we're doing it. So I'm going to go grab my Dremel and put the cutoff wheel on and we'll see if we can make a mess here. All right, let's see what we can mess up. the way they call these heavy duty cutoff wheels because well I've broken two so far and I'm not even a quarter of the way done but I've got plenty so we're gonna keep going I put two on this time we'll see if that helps Well, as you can see, what the reason we covered it up, that piece is now cut off. Now I cut a majority of this backside and then I was able to just bust it off. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, just a sanding disc on my Dremel and kind of clean that up a little bit. So you can see what we have left here. Um, you know, it, it doesn't look great, but it doesn't have to because it's hidden. And it's kind of hard to reach, to be honest with you. But uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to grab the vacuum. We're going to try to vacuum up as much as possible, especially around this area. And then we'll just lift everything out of the way, uh, trying to keep all the debris from falling on the inside of the motor, obviously.
clean this area with some brake clean and I vacuumed everything out and it looks really good guys so I think we are good uh, I don't see any shavings in here now there might be some it's almost inevitable but hopefully we got them all I'm going to take the vacuum through it one or two more times but I think we're good. We're going to test fit that um, valley cover here in just one second. Once that's cut, I'm going to go over this one more time just with some um, cleaner and I'm just using some um, adhesive remover or brake clean just to make sure we got a good clean mating surface. And we're going to grab that out of the box, grab it real quick and see if we cut enough off. now. Hopefully we did because I really don't want to put all that crap back together, but if we didn't we'll know real quick And we did so We are ready to start snugging this down So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna get these just hand tight for now and then I'll come back in just a second and we'll talk about the torque specs. But um, if you go to put this on and the front one won't line up, that's, that's your problem. You need to cut that. Not a huge deal. It just sucks that I didn't notice that before I put the engine in the car. Obviously, that would have been a lot easier to do uh, out of the car. But anyway, we're finished up. We don't have any crap anywhere. Uh, it looks to be like, uh, well, I'll quit talking. I'm going to hand tighten these down and then we'll torque them just one second. So once you have these all hand tightened down, you go ahead and torque them to 18 foot pounds. Now this does come, the parts all list does come with a gasket and new bolts. And I start in the middle, kind of like an intake or a head and kind of work my way out alternating. It doesn't necessarily specify that you do that, but it just makes me feel more comfortable doing it that way. Now, once we do that, um, like I said, I already have the plug in the back here. There is a vacuum cap that is a separate part number that goes here, and then your new connection uh, will be to the throttle body up front, and we'll show you that once we get the intake back into place. Well, normally, guys, the next step would be to put the knock sensors into place and then the harness, but I noticed my knock sensors kind of are rough, and I think I'm going to replace them while I've got this apart. It's a great time to do that. I recommend that anytime you take, anytime you take the intake off anyway. I was just going to keep them because it was such a low mileage car, but I should probably take my own advice, so I'm going to be replacing them. The other thing is a lot of people replace this harness. I've been cleaning my... Uh, harness the wiring harness for the car but I clean this off as well a lot of people replace this because well it's just a good time to do that while you've got the intake off and everything out of the way so uh, I think that's gonna be it for today I'm hot and sweaty and uh, I've got a big mess to clean up from cutting this up and uh, I've got to clean up my towels I think those will now be garage towels I don't think my wife's gonna want to dry off with those anyway guys if you like this video if it was informative i wanted to show you guys how to put the ls6 valley cover on this car i know it's not a long video but if you did like it please smash that thumbs up button if you're not subscribed go down and hit that subscribe button and while you're down there make sure you ring that bell icon that way you're notified every time we drop a new video and well stay tuned because we've got way more coming on this